All right, guys, in today's video, I'm going to be talking about my top luxury face powders and kind of what I use them for because I have some pressed powder favorites, some loose powders, and some just different powders that I want to talk about. So before I get into my favorite luxury powders, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it, and let me know what your favorite face powders are um, because I'm always willing to try something new if you have a favorite that I haven't mentioned. So let's just get straight into it. So I think I'm gonna start out with my pressed powder favorites. So typically when I go in for a pressed powder, I don't like pressed powder underneath my eyes, so I definitely avoid pressed powder for that area. I like pressed powder. I feel like I'm gonna say powder over and over again in this video. I typically like it either when I finish my makeup, so I just use it in my pore area, so literally just in this area here in the middle of my chin, just places where I get a little bit of sh a little bit shiny throughout the day, or I reserve those powders as like a touch up, so I will not powder my face. And then maybe at like 2 p.m. when my foundation has been wearing for about five or six hours and I, I'm noticing a little bit of wear, then I'll go in and touch up there because I'd rather avoid powder for as long as possible and then go in and touch up instead of applying powder and then just having to reapply that same exact powder four or five hours later. Um, that's just typically what I like, especially if I'm going to be wearing my foundation all day long. Um, that's just a personal preference. And again, I do have dry skin, so I'm not someone who gets oily throughout the day, but sometimes there's a little bit of wear, or maybe I'm a little bit, a little bit shiny, depending again on the time of year. Like if it's the summertime, obviously I'm going to be a little hotter than during the winter. Um, all those things come into play when using a powder. And definitely if I am using a dewy foundation, then I probably will set that down maybe an hour after I apply foundation versus right away. Um, just because, again, I want to avoid powdering my skin as much as possible. So with that being said, let's start with the pressed powder. So the first one I have to mention, and I don't want this to go in any particular order because I do love all these powders. Um, this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. Um, mine is in the shade 2 Medium. This is just such a gorgeous powder. I have talked about it many, many times on my channel. Um, this is one of my favorite products from Charlotte Tilbury and this is a very powdery powder So when you put your brush into it, you will see powder fly off and Usually I don't like powders like that because I do have dry skin and usually those type of powders just sit on my skin instead of sinking in I'm wearing this one today as kind of just my finishing touch-up powder because I have been I like I applied this look a few hours ago but this is just such a gorgeous powder. Definitely recommend if you have a drier skin type and you're maybe hesitant about purchasing a powder because when you apply this on the skin, it is so lightweight and it really does airbrush the skin. Um, that's something that really impressed me about this powder because usually powders just looked really dry and heavy on my skin and I could never find one that worked for me. But when Charlotte released this product, it just was a game changer. And honestly, it does really blur the appearance of pores. It um, kind of decreases the look of texture on your skin. It's a very interesting powder. And this is one that I find if I do apply it, say in the morning and I do need to touch up, it's a very nice touch up powder as well. It doesn't ever look too cakey or too heavy. Um, so highly recommend this one. Again, this is a really long time favorite. It's a staple in my makeup routine. Obviously I've hit pan on it. This is probably my third compact and this will be a repurchase for me again because I just can't live without it. Another pressed powder that has really impressed me lately and that it is kind of a more recent purchase is the Chantecaille. This is the Perfect Blur Finishing Powder. So again, this is called a finish powder as well. So um, like I said with my powder, I like to apply this after I've applied all my makeup, just only in my pore areas. Um, this one is a nice one because you can buff with it at the end of your makeup application just to soften everything. Or again, you can apply this just to set your makeup. So I really like this because it is so silky smooth. And when you push, put your brush into it, it's not as powdery as the Charlotte Tilbury one. So I feel like this compact is going to last me a lot longer than this one, but it really is smoothing on the skin. I also find this um, very friendly for touch-ups because it is such a lightweight powder and it doesn't really look like anything on the skin. Not that the Charlotte Tilbury one does either, but this is just so lightweight. It does a beautiful job of blurring the appearance of texture and pores. I did mention that you can touch up with this one, but it is a really long wearing powder. I feel like this one may not be as long wearing. It does have um, like some hydrating properties to it, 
This one is targeted as like a blur, a perfect blurring finishing powder. So it does have a bit more longevity to it, but it just looks again, very beautiful on the skin. It really helps reduce the appearance of pores and textures and texture, not textures. It just, it looks really lovely on the skin. This is one of my favorites. This is a limited edition powder, which I always find is weird to do limited edition powder. So I hope they come out with this permanently and they create some more colors because this is a powder that I would definitely miss in my collection once I run through it. I have considered picking up a backup of this just because I do really like it as a finishing powder just to kind of set my makeup in place. And again, it really does make a difference in the appearance of pores and texture on your skin. So highly recommend this one. And then the last powder, press powder that I have to mention is the Sisley Blur Expert. So all these are marketed pretty much as a blurring airbrush powder. And I do find that all of them do exactly that. They are a little bit different. So this one in comparison with the other ones is the least powdery. When you put your brush into it, you cannot see any powder kick up at all. It's very hard to pick up. So when using this product, you would probably want to use a more dense brush. And this is a very unique powder. I actually like using this as a primer, which seems crazy, but literally when you apply this, I just take a more dense brush and just a little bit of the powder and I just press it on this area of my face where I have some pores. I don't really have that much texture on my skin, so I can't speak to if you have like texture on your forehead or anything or on your chin. But when I apply it in this area and then apply my foundation over top, oh my gosh, it gives you baby butt cheeks, which I got that reference from Michelle Wong, but it literally makes your skin look poreless, so refined, and makeup just sits on top so beautifully. Um, it also helps the longevity of the foundation when you apply this underneath. But again, that is an extra step, so I kind of reserve this powder for special occasions. This is also really nice if you want to finish off your makeup. So again, I like to buff my makeup at the very end just to soften everything up so my bronzer, blush, and highlight all kind of blend into each other seamlessly. This works really nicely if you are looking for a powder to buff with that doesn't have any luminosity to it. This is also really great, again, as a touch-up powder. So because it does have that blurring technology in it, if you just take like a dense brush with you, and I'd recommend just taking a little brush and just pressing in the areas. And with this powder, I want to emphasize that I think it's important that you press it into your skin versus buffing it in um, because I really think that it just makes such a difference when you do it that way. Like I, I do notice a difference when I apply this powder that way. Um, but again, it works really nice if you just take this and you use it as a touch-up powder. This is what I have in my handbag if I do touch up my makeup, which I don't usually do, but it's kind of a just a ca in case thing. It's just such a game-changing powder. I think it's very unique and something different in I don't know, the makeup market, which it's hard to come by these days. So these are my top three kind of finishing powders or powders to set my makeup, however you like to wear them. Like these are just the perfect blurring powders. Um, if you pick up either one of these, you won't be disappointed. So I had to talk about these. All right, so next I think I'm gonna move on to loose powders. So loose powders and me have not the best history. I typically do not like loose powders just because it is so easy to pick up excess product and it can tend to look a little heavy on the skin, just in my personal opinion. You have to really make sure you're buffing off that excess, and then powder flies out everywhere, and it just was never my favorite product to use. Um, but because I need to set my concealer, I just, I have to personally, it will move and crease if I don't, and pressed powders do not work under my eye. I just think it's a little too heavy. I find that the best technique, sorry, I'm just gonna speak about technique quickly, is to go in with my damp beauty blender that I have used for, well, I put concealer on before foundation, so I actually haven't used it for foundation yet. But I go in with my damp beauty blender that I've used to apply my concealer, and I make sure that it is definitely wrung out. You don't want any water in that beauty blender. And I go in and pick up a little bit of powder, and I just sweep off all the excess, so that basically the powder is really absorbed into that sponge. And then I press it under my eyes. That's typically what I like to use loose powder for. These ones are all my favorite loose powders because if I do use them on my face, they have that blur, that pore blurring technology. First one I'm going to mention is probably my favorite, so we'll go through that first. This is the Givenchy Universal Nude. Um, this is the matte and translucent finishing loose powder, and, and it's a universal shade. But it's basically just this creamy white powder. It is very, very, very silky and very finely milled. Like when you feel it, it actually feels like velvet. 
Um, so it's definitely a white powder, which again is why I don't agree that it's universal because it would leave a white cast on some skin tones, but it just blends into the skin so beautifully. And it isn't a powder that's overly matte. It definitely is more leaning on the matte side, which is why I look, like to use it under my eyes because I don't like something that's too, um, like I don't want anything light reflecting because then I just think it makes my under eyes look bad. Um, but this does a great job, again, with the pore blurring. I like to apply first the powder kind of over this pore area, and then I bring it up to set my concealer. And this just does such a good job. It's lovely. It wears all day. I, I never have any breaking up. The powder never looks heavy on my skin. Um, like sometimes, I don't know if you've ever used a powder, and then halfway throughout the day, you notice that it's kind of like creasing, or it just looks heavy under there. This never does that. Super lightweight. Um, it's a powder I can't even feel on my skin, which is definitely um, something I look for in a powder. But this is just a really nice one. And again, this is one that I will set my full face with um, because it does such a great job of reducing the appearance of pores and texture and just isn't overly matte. Like it doesn't make me look like a dead person or like I'm decaying inside. It's just, it's such a nice one. So highly recommend that. And then I guess while we're on the topic of Givenchy, my other favorite powder from them is the Prism Libre. This is a matte finish and enhanced radiance loose powder. So these two, they're not quite the same. This powder definitely isn't as finely milled. It has a bit, it's a bit thicker, and I hate to use that word with a powder, but it definitely has a bit more substance to it. So when you feel it in the compact, it's not as silky smooth, like I said, but it has a really nice velvet finish to it. It definitely is a little bit more, a little more radiant than the other powder I mentioned, but it doesn't really add like a glow to your skin. It just, it's such a great um, skin looking powder, which I know sounds kind of weird because it's a powder and it's not skin, but it, it just does a great job setting everything. So I definitely recommend both these powders. I don't think you can go wrong with either of them. I would say just if you have maybe oilier skin, this one might be the better option. If you have drier skin, this one does have just a slight bit of radiance to it. Um, but both of these are amazing. Both are pore blurring. Both look really good, great over texture. So I don't think you can go wrong. Um, but my third favorite loose powder, and I was hesitant mentioning this because I know that it's going out of stock. Um, but I just wanted to throw it out there as an honorable mention. This is the YSL Souffle Déclat. I got mine in the shade O2. So I just picked this up and I don't know if my haul will be out yet where I picked it up. But anyways, I would say this powder is in the middle of those two Givenchy powders. It's very silky and velvety, it feels like, and you probably can't see that on my skin. It's kind of just a skin tone powder. But there's, if you look at it close enough, there's the softest touch of like a luminosity, but it's so subtle. So this one I love for under my eyes. I know everyone loves the Hourglass Veil Powder. That doesn't look the best on me. It actually looks kind of heavy on me. This is everything I wanted the Hourglass Veil Powder to be. It just looks, it leaves your under eyes looking set, but hydrated, and it wears lovely throughout the day. It looks beautiful over top of pores. Like I said, it's really unique because, like I said, it does have that slight luminosity, but it also blurs the appearance of pores. And because this does have a slight luminosity, I love this as a buffing powder as well. So I like that I can use it as a like a combination under my eyes and as a buffing powder it's just so gorgeous if you happen to see this in stores or if you're in canada where it is still available highly recommend picking this one up i do not think you'd be disappointed because it's just it's so lovely on the skin it gives you that creamy glow um but it sets down your makeup and still gives you that skin like natural looking appearance and it's a powder that wears all day long for me and it never looks heavy it never looks cakey it's just it's gorgeous to the final category, this is the buffing powder or finishing powder um, section, I guess you could call it. So I know I said a lot of other powders could be used as a finishing powder, but these are my favorite to actually use as a finishing powder. They just do the best job for me. They just give you that, that gorgeous buffed in look that gives you that skin like texture back to your skin, which again, I know seems weird when you're using a powder, but it just adds such a beautiful glow back to the skin. Again, it's so hard to describe these without applying it onto your skin and seeing the result for yourself. But the first one I want to mention is the Chantecaille Eclat Dew Face Powder. So this came out in the holiday release for Chantecaille's holiday collection. And this is what it looks like. It's basically just a white powder. This feels so weird when you feel it. It feels like a putty almost. It's like a putty powder. So 
it applies kind of like a cream and it sets like a powder essentially. So I like to use this with any of my finishing powders. I take my Sony G Face One brush, is that it? I'll leave the name down below, Face Pro brush, whatever. I like to take that and just buff it into the skin and go over top of like my bronzer, my blush and my highlight just to melt everything into the skin. And this adds such a beautiful glow. It's very, it's a very soft glow. Like I said, it is kind of that silky putty texture. So it goes onto the skin very lightly. You need to pick up a bit more. Well, it does pick up product on the brush, I will say, but it just melts into the skin so gorgeously. Adds such a very, like a very, very, very soft sheen to the skin. But just the glow it gives to the skin, it gives you that kind of gorgeous candlelight glow. So recommend this. I'm pretty sure it's still available. This is one of my favorites. The next one on my list has become a fast favorite and might be one of my favorite laces of 2020 so far. This is the YSL 2 Chaclat 3D All Over Glow. So the other YSL powder I talked about, it's definitely less glowy than this one is. This one is definitely pretty, pretty glowy. Um, but it's kind of that gorgeous, it's like a peachy bronze. And it's really weird because it does have like a reflective lavender. If you look at it very close, swatch on your hand. On my face, I can't actually see that lavender or it's kind of like a, yeah, I guess it might be a, light, a lavender kind of tint to it. I can't see that on my face, like I can't detect it at all, but I can see it if I heavily swatch it on my hand. This again gives you that creamy glow back to your skin. It buffs everything together really nicely. And it's, it's a very soft, it's a soft glow. And it does remind me like the texture is definitely similar to the Chantecai one. It's a bit more powdery than the Chantecai, but if you can't pick up the Chantecai one, or maybe it's a little too expensive for you, or maybe it's just too light for you, this one, is so lovely. It's become a fast favorite. I know. And then my favorite finishing powder of all time, which again, you have heard me talk about many, many times. I actually don't have it with me because I am moving. I'm selling my condo, so I'm staying at my mom's while my place is being sold. So I didn't want to bring my Guerlain Meteorites powder in the tin because it has those like little balls and I didn't want them to break. It's a very messy product that you do not want to travel with. So I have my pressed version here, which I actually don't like as much. So Take this with a grain of salt because I like the version in the tin that has the little balls. I love the Guerlain Meteorites. This is my favorite of all time finishing powder. If I had to recommend one finishing powder, it would definitely be the Guerlain Meteorites, but sometimes I like to switch it up. This gives you the most beautiful creamy glow back to your skin. And it's really unique because when you first apply it, you'll definitely see, again, I don't want to say glitter, I don't want to scare anyone off, but you see little flecks of like, luminosity but as you buff it into the skin it just blends in and becomes creamier on the skin and gives you just like when you turn to the side you get that really pretty glow that it's, it's just really healthy and I think that's what I love most about a finishing powder is it just gives you that healthy glow back to your skin where your skin actually looks like skin versus like all these products just like sitting on top of each other it's so gorgeous and Again, it's one of those products that I feel like you have to use to really know what I mean when I'm saying like that it gives you a candlelight glow, that it gives you that natural skin-like appearance back um, to your skin, or that like it looks creamy on the skin. It's really hard to describe unless you see it in person, but I just, I love this powder. It's something that I don't use a finishing powder all the time. I'll try and like buff my makeup in with just a clean brush at the end, just so things look smooth but I notice such a difference when I go in with a finishing powder. It just, it totally completes the look. And again, it's perfect for like a special occasion if you're really wanting to go, I don't know, put in a little extra effort. So a finishing powder is very unique. It's very specific. You have to be willing to take that extra effort, but to me, it is worth the extra effort. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Those are all my favorite powders. Um, I hope I didn't like talk about the same thing. I feel like all my powders are very similar, like the ones that I love. So I hope this wasn't too redundant and it was boring. But I've had a few requests to talk about my favorite powders. I hope this helped if you were um, wondering about a powder or maybe you were debating which one to get. Um, yeah, I just, I love all these. I would highly recommend every one that I mentioned. Obviously, you don't have to get all of these. You could pick one from each category. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this video. I don't want to blab on too much because I tend to do that, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Like this video if you like it. Tell me your favorite powders down below if I didn't mention any of your favorites. Anyways, I will see you guys in my next video.